The past year has been challenging for the beauty and wellness industry, and we were inspired by the resilience and perseverance of our clients and the industry. Despite all the craziness, we made it a priority to continue to provide expert advice and inspiration through our Coffee Talk series all year long. We had some amazing educators, influencers, and clients, and today we're looking back at the top business tips shared through our Coffee Talk guests. Try to catch me hollering at the moon. We started Coffee Talk in 2020 with a three-part episode featuring keynote speaker, trainer, founder of Beauty Smarts, and a successful former spa owner, Carol Phillips. Carol shared her expert advice on how to refocus by working smarter. And in part two, she explained how owners can improve their retail sales by better educating staff about products they offer. So what I tell my owners to do is there's an exercise that they have to research the product, write it out, look at what makes it different. Can the staff tell me why this shampoo is different than this one or brand A to brand B? Mm -hmm. Because if the staff can't get the words out of their, you know, like they're not comfortable saying it, Dynamite's not going to open their mouth. Right? And so the only way you get comfortable, which gains the momentum, which gains the traction, which gains the sales, which flips the inventory, that's the domino effect that we're missing in almost every single beauty business today. I can tell you we could double retail sales if they learned selling strategy and they learned how to talk about their product. That's wild. One of the key strategies to creating a successful business is building a recognizable powerhouse brand, and not many have done it better than Patrick Heaney co-owner of the award-winning Mango Salons. Let's hear Pat's thoughts on the biggest mistakes salons made when trying to build their brand, worrying about their pricing. Consumers don't go to a salon to get a cheap haircut. Um, they come to a salon to feel good and create a good look and work closely with a highly trained professional. Last year we did comprehensive consumer research on all of our customers that come to Mango and what we found was price wasn't even in the top five. The number one driver for our guests at Mango are uh, quality services. The number two was highly trained, experienced professionals. And those two were the highest factors that drive our, our guests to our brand. And I think the biggest mistake that salons make is they worry so much about price and what, what the salon down the street is charging that they fall into that trap of pricing their services too low. Just as salons and spas were starting to shut down due to COVID-19 restrictions in April 2020, we were joined by Martino Cartier, celebrity stylist and owner of Martino Cartier Salon, to hear how he's using his time to give his business a makeover and get his staff excited, even in these uncertain times. Since the corona started, because we're all scared, and everyone's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I'll tell you this, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. So during this time, don't be a pigeon, be an eagle, and let Millennium and Mevo help pave the way for growth in the future. Throughout 2020, salons and spas had to adjust business practices and strategies to adapt to the restrictions and changes brought on by COVID-19. We chatted with Paula Henson, Director of Education and co-owner of Cool Beauty Consulting and Hairdresser at Nova Salon and a Mevo 2 client to hear how her salon and the industry as a whole were adjusting to the new normal and steps that salons and spas can take to continue to provide an amazing client experience. So recognizing that the littlest thing can be the biggest deal and you really have to honor the fact that while it might not seem logical to watch someone's emotional reaction, it is still a very real emotion. And we need a minute to take it in as a real thing. Uh, and especially for clients, because I think if we can make if we can make clients feel safe, then their response to us will be a little calmer. Therefore, you'll have a whole staff of hairdressers that aren't on the edge about the clients freaking out on them, right? You know what I mean? Like everybody just wanted their gray coverage touched up, you know? <laughs> like, so, but it, but it does last a little longer because I do think that we're going to see like some ebbs and flows of this thing for the next year or so and we're going to need to continually measure that emotional response, um, especially as, you know, some things aren't going some people's way and that, that causes emotions. And 
I would ask the staff to please be the same with your leaders. You know, I think we look to the leaders, the managers, the front desk, the people with titles of the business, the owners. We look at them for strength. And of, and of course, we need to offer that as leaders. And remember, you know, leaders need to be able to rely on their, um, on their peers as well. So the, if you see a break for a moment in a leader, it's all it is. It's the same moment you've had. Let's, um, let's approach it with some grace. Social media plays a vital role in marketing, branding, and building client connections for salons and spas, especially Instagram. To better understand how business leaders can step up their social media game, we were joined by hairstylist, industry educator, and social media expert, Jamie Dana. Let's hear from Jamie on the top content you should share on your business social channels. One of the things that is vitally important um, when we're talking about growing your business in a year post COVID, right? Or even as we go into the future is connection. And ultimately people want to have more connection, not only with each other, but with their clients, with the businesses that they're working for, um, with the businesses that their you know, consumers are going to. And truly, I believe that Instagram is the best way to do that. So I truly believe that having a client experience on your Instagram is so important. So the moment that a client or customer lands on your Instagram page, whether you're a salon or spa, or even as an individual stylist or beauty professional, when that customer lands on your page, what are they thinking? What's going through their mind? Um, are they tapping around and most likely they're going to start with your profile photo into your bio. They're going to read what you're about. And so having information in there is really important. They might tap through your Instagram story highlights just to see a little bit more about your business. They might tap through if you have any active Instagram stories. And then from there, they're going to go down and just scroll through your feed. And so you need to make sure that you're showing off a variety of things. So think about it, when a client lands on your page, what are they seeing? Are they just seeing the same types of work over and over? Or are they seeing bits and pieces of your work, bits and pieces of the services that you offer, um, different photos of your team members and your service providers. Maybe it's a interview with one of your stylists and you're featuring them, or um, maybe it's one of your estheticians giving a facial and it's a photo of that. What's the client experience look like? Are you showing the products that you sell and the um, benefits to those products? Not just showing a product and saying, hey, it's on sale, but teaching your audience the benefits of those products. And lastly, are you showing off your space? Um, I think so often people want to get an idea of what they're walking into before they ever book an appointment. Um, they want to know what they're going to experience while they're there. So not only is this, is this a thing that you want to show in your photos, but maybe it's videos, maybe it's your stories, maybe it is those Instagram highlights. All of those things are so important. We heard from almost all of our clients how Mevo2 helps their business throughout a challenging year and one client who moved to Mevo2 early in 2020, Chris Fair, director of team success at New York, New York hair salon and day spa. He shared how he used technology and leadership to overcome challenges and implement successful new strategies that led to real success. So my first piece of advice is just don't close yourself off to any new ideas right now because you don't know what is gonna be the right puzzle pieces to put together to fix uh, the challenges with communicating with your guests, with getting them in the door, with making sure they feel safe and happy, um, because there really, there is no limit. Um, until the moment that your business shuts down completely and closes, uh, you should always be evaluating how to make things stronger and better. There is no 100% correct answer. Uh, we're still learning things left and right and making adjustments and making sure that we never think we have all the answers because that's the moment where we stop learning from each other. And I can't stress enough that it's never too late to start that. I know lots of salons and spas in our region and around our country were scared and didn't know what to do when the shutdown happened. And now, more importantly, they're terrified to get started again because they didn't do any, they feel like they didn't do enough when they were shut down to be able to um, safely and securely reopen. But the answer is, is just start, take the first step. Somebody has to push themselves forward and begin the process of figuring out what your new business is gonna look like. And it's okay if you try something and it doesn't work. My 
my mind, did we try a lot of things that got thrown by the wayside within the first two days of being reopened? Uh, because we knew that we knew once we started it, this isn't reasonable, this isn't realistic, and we just tossed it or we adjusted it and we restarted again. Um, don't be scared to do that because it, it's now or never, and it's an opportunity, but it's a scary time. So just be be self-conscious and aware, and realize it's okay not to have all the answers. We hope you learn as much as we do from our Coffee Talk guest, and we look forward to seeing you for more amazing episodes coming this year. I'll see you guys next time on Coffee Talk.